Okay, let's go ahead and solve this equation step by step. And uh, if you think you could do this, I think the best use of your time here is to pause the video, uh, go ahead and take a, well, it might take you like a minute to solve this and put your answer into the comment section. I think that's the best use of a video like this is to, you know, see if you could do this uh, first. Now, if you're taking any sort of algebra uh, course, you're gonna definitely need to be able to solve equations like this. But I'm gonna walk you through the exact steps and uh, this would be a good kind of practice problem. Now, if this is too um, kind of intimidating for you, then you want to kind of back up and focus more on one and two step equations. This type of equation in algebra is called a multi-step equation. Uh, obviously, there's going to be multiple steps involved to solve it, but it's not that difficult. Okay, so I'm going to get into all of this in just one second. But uh, first, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John. I'm the founder of TC Math Academy. I've been teaching math for several decades, middle and high school mathematics. And I can tell you right now, all students can be successful in math, but it requires two things. One, you got to be willing to work at it. And the second thing is you need great math instruction, super clear and understandable. And that's where I can help you out. So if you're at the middle school, high school, or even college level, definitely check out my math help program. I'm going to leave a link to it in the description of this video. By the way, if you happen to be preparing for a test with a math section, I'm talking about things like the GED, SAT, ACT, maybe the GRE, GMAT, ASVAB, or teacher certification exam, I have a lot of test prep courses that can help you out. If you homeschool, I have excellent middle and high school math courses that you might want to check out. And if this video helps you out, don't forget to like and subscribe as well. All right, so let's get into it. And uh, let's just discuss some basic concepts in algebra when we're dealing with an equation. Okay, now obviously, when you see this symbol and there's some variables and numbers going on, you are looking at an equation. And the objective is to solve the equation. And typically, what that looks like is there's going to be a variable like x over here, and that's going to be equal to some number. Let's just make up a number for this example. Let's say 7. So when we have the variable all by itself and it's equal to some number, this is when we know we are done solving an equation. And this number right here, seven, okay, would be the solution to the uh, equation, okay, that involves x. So this is some basic terminology uh, here. But let's talk about some other things when we're solving equations. Now, again, uh, you want to get the variables, okay, like we had x into the left-hand side. Typically, you want to get all your variable terms on the left-hand side and all your number terms on the right-hand side. Now, the way we do that is we're going to have to move variable terms that are on the right over to the left, and any numbers on the left, we're going to have to move over to the right and do other uh, type of steps as well. But the main idea is whatever you do to one side of the equation to make these steps happen, you have to do um, the exact same thing on the other side. So, for example, if you're going to add 3 to this side of the equation, you can do whatever you want on this side as long as you do it equally to the other side. Okay, that could be addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division. Now, another thing that you want to be thinking about when you're solving equations is anytime you see a distributive property situation, something like this, where there's a number outside of a sum or difference where there's a variable like 2 parentheses x plus 1, you want to go ahead and handle these first. Okay, it's another typical rule for, uh, rule for solving equations. So in this case, this would be 2x plus 2 times 1, of course, would be 2. So again, anytime you see distributed property situations, handle those uh, first, and then you can start working with these terms right here. So I'm just kind of giving you a quick overview. Again, the way to solve, learn how to solve multi-step equations in algebra is you first need to master the one-step equations. And uh, those would be things like x plus 3 equals 5, or x minus 3 equals 5, or 2x equals 5, or maybe 2 thirds x is equal to 5. So these are examples of multi-step equations. So you, um, I'm sorry, not multi-step, one-step equations. So you got to master these, and then you work your way up to two-step equations. And that would be an example of like 2x minus 1 equals 9. This uh, equation here requires two steps, so you got to learn how to solve equations in this order, and then you're going to work uh, your way up to multi-step equations, and that is what we have here. Okay, so without further ado, let's go ahead and get into solving this equation. And of course, I already kind of um, wrote the steps out so I can kind of talk about things. All right, so let's take a look at the equation. 
And as we scan it, we're like, okay, I see some disturbed property uh, situations right here. So as I indicated, you want to go ahead and handle those first. All right, so if you don't know how to do distributed property, you're going to have a difficult time solving equations. So anything I'm saying here that you don't know how to do, a couple of suggestions. One, I have a ton of uh, videos on my YouTube channel on these topics. But if you really want to know this stuff, I would suggest checking out any one of my algebra courses, pre-algebra, algebra 1, algebra 2, college algebra, and maybe even you're at the uh, pre-calculus level. Who knows? Okay, so here we have 4 times y minus 1. Let's go ahead and apply the distributive property. So this is going to be... This is going to be 4y minus 4 plus 2y. So when I do this, I'm just going to rewrite uh, the rest of the left-hand side of the equation. Okay, You don't want to do too many steps at once when you're solving the equations. You want to make it easy for your teacher to read and understand what you're doing. So on the right-hand side, we have 3 times 5y. Of course, that's 15y. And then it's 3 times 1 is 3 plus 4. So you can kind of see the steps here. You're like, okay, I understand that. We took care of these uh, distributive property situations first. So now what do we want to do? Well, we want to clean up the left-hand, right-hand uh, sides. So here we have a 4y and a 2y. We can combine like terms. That gives us a 6y minus 4. Okay, so that's what we did right here. So again, just one step at a time. You don't want to take too many. You don't want to, you don't want to take too many steps because you want to be able to kind of check as you go. Okay, you should be taking a step and double checking yourself, taking a step, double checking yourself, and writing each step nice and clear. Okay, so let's take a look at the right the right hand side. We have 15y. There's no other variables over here, but we have a three and a four, and because uh, of course we can add those up, and that is seven. All right, so at this point, we have a situation where we have a variable number, a variable, and a number. So this is where we want to start moving our variables, all of our variables to the left, and all of our numbers to the right. It doesn't make a difference if you move your numbers first or your variable or your variables first. Um, so in this case, I'm going to go ahead and move um, uh, this 15y. I'm going to move it over here and link it up with that 6y. So how do we do that? Well, I have a positive 15y here. If I subtract 15y from the right-hand side, uh, that basically makes this 15y disappear. But remember the rule in algebra. Whatever you do to one side of the equation, you have to do it equally to the other side. So I'm going to subtract 15y from both sides of the equation. And notice the format here. Okay, I'm putting this 15y, uh, this uh, negative 15y underneath this 15y, and then I'm putting this minus 15y underneath this 6y. So what you kind of do is add down in a column manner. So 6y plus negative 15y, or 6y minus 15y, is negative 9y. And this negative 4 plus nothing is minus 4. Okay, then 15y minus 15y is, of course, 0. So we don't need to write that. And then 7 plus nothing is 7, and I'll kind of scoot it over there. Okay, so that is effectively... Um, taking care of getting all of our variables to the left-hand side. Now we need to get all of our numbers to the right-hand side. And notice how I'm kind of not doing too many steps as one, at once up here. I'm kind of rewriting this step, negative 9y minus 4 equals 7. I'm rewriting it again. Um, now just to be crystal clear on what's going on here in the problem, but you should do this as well. You should kind of follow, copy my format here. Okay, so we have this negative 4, uh, and I want to move this over to this other side. So I can do that by adding a 4 to the left-hand side. Again, the steps that I'm um, talking about here in this multi-step equation should have already been mastered in one- and two-step equations. So if you're confused about any of this stuff, you want to go back and reference those type of equations. But if I add a 4 to the left-hand side and the right-hand side, remember I can do it whatever I want. As long as I do it equally to both sides of the equation, that's effectively moving that number to the right-hand side. And then we're going to go ahead and just add down in a column manner. Negative uh, 9y plus nothing is negative 9y. Minus 4 plus 4 is 0. We don't need to write that. And 7 plus 4 is, of course, 11. All right, so we have negative 9y is equal to 11. We're almost there. So to solve for y, I need to do what? Well, you just have to divide both sides of the equation by negative 9 and there is a point, let me just show you the solution here. The solution is y is equal to negative um, 11 over 9. But a common question that comes up in algebra is this. If I write this, this fraction, uh, y is equal to 11 
over negative 9, is that the same as negative 11 over 9? Or would that be the same as negative 11 over 9? And all of these are equivalent. It doesn't make a difference where you write the negative uh, sign. If you're dividing, for example, this positive 11 by a negative 9, remember a positive divided by a negative is a negative. So really, actually, the most appropriate way to write the final answer here is to put that negative sign in front of that uh, fraction, which indicates that the value of that fraction is negative, and here is the solution. Okay, so how did you do? If you attempted this problem and you got this thing right, well, I must go ahead and give you a good old nice happy face with a good old 1985 flat top haircut, A plus and 100%. I know you may not think that is a, a cool haircut, especially in this day and age, but back in the day, those were uh, pretty cool and impressive, just like your ability to solve this problem. So um, if you try to solve this problem, and you were confused about anything, but you're not confused, well, that is part of the learning process, okay? The only way you're going to get better at math is really through practice, but you don't want to, you know, practice uh, poor techniques. Um, it's no different than like sports, okay? If you're trying to learn how to shoot a basketball and you're using a bad technique and you keep missing, well, you may want to correct that technique and start using a better technique, and that's how you're going to improve. Same thing with learning mathematics, okay? So if there's something you don't understand, fix it and then practice. You have to practice. Watching me do math is not the same as you learning math. Okay, so hopefully, again, uh, this was a good use of your time. That's why I make these videos. And with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.